Hello everyone, I'm Little Nickerdle. There is um, a creepy bug flying around right now, and I will murder you. It's just a fly. Okay. I think I'm fine. Hang on. There's also a storm outside, so forgive me if I keep on looking above at my window. Um... Yeah, it's a normal fly, and I forgot my tea. So many things to do. Ugh, I hate this tea, but whatever, I need it. Anyway, and welcome back to another episode of Zombie Exodus. Now, I believe we are at the last part of the entire game. That's my leg. Fly, you're going to be very distracting. Quit bugging me. So... We're gonna have some fun with it, and enjoy the last bits together on this awesome ride of this game that we have been playing together for a couple of months now. So, let's begin. You stand in front of the cathedral and survey the pile of rubble that used to be the entrance. Cold morning air seeps through the numerous holes. Pef, pref, perforating the once formidable structure. Whew, we're off to a good start. Past the walls, the bodies of zombies and raiders cover the tall grass. A deep breath leads, coughing as the smell of ripe death lingers in the air. The sun's rays heat your skin. You want to sleep, to escape the sight of destruction, but there is too much work to be done. And now that you lead the survivors, they will await your guidance. Oh yeah. Oh my god. What the hell are you doing? In... Pardon me. I forgot that we were the leader of everyone now. Stepping through the shattered entrance, you glance around the remaining members of your group. Uncle Lou sits on a folding chair, holding his ribs though breathing normally. Mindy st stands at the entrance, kicking dirt and rubble, her eyes appearing as numb and blank as one of the dead. Tom and Heather rest at the foot of the front wall. You feel a hand on your back and turn to find Emma passing by. Her face smudged with dirt, eyes glazed like two smoky orbs of glass. Hands from behind touch your back and you spin to find Emma, her face covered in a fine layer of ash, her shirt ripped and stained. Are you alright? she asks. You stare into her watery bloodshot eyes. Um, fine for now, a lot of work to do, I say, but stand apart. Don't worry about me, Emma, and let's get to work. As good as we expected, I say and hold her hands. Um, okay, um, okay then. We're fine, but there's a lot of work to be done. We can't go on like this forever, she says. Now that I'm in charge, things will be better, you say. We'll work on building this place back up. Then you stay off my floor. Then... What are we gonna do? We will decide if we stay and defend or search a new for a new place to live. Oh, don't you be coming into my face. I will get you. Okay, you're all I have left in this world now, she says. You can't put yourself at risk anymore. But Emma, Chloe, I can't deal with this anymore. So much death, it never ends. You have to promise me you'll keep yourself out of harm's way. There are a lot of people here and I don't need them. I need you. Emma, I don't want to talk about this now. People up in the sky are having ha I, I will kill you. I will seriously kill you. Pardon me. So we can get to work. We'll talk later. You step away from Emma to the center of the sanctuary. The security that the cathedral once offered has been several, severely di diminished. Looking through your inventory, you take out a weapon to carry in case of an attack until the front doors are fixed and all other open areas are blocked. I... well, there's uh, quite a bit of... Um, I'll just take a shotgun for now. As a new leader of the cathedral, your major task is in deciding how best to proceed. Should the cathedral be rebuilt or is it time to leave? You survey the damage and realize you will need to stay here for at least a little while longer. So 
so you must consider handling the most pressing issues. Dead zombies and raiders lie about and must be cleared soon, as infection is too serious a risk. Of course, the entrance to this sanctuary is in shambles and wide open. Anyone or anything could enter with little effort. There is also the similar issue of the sacred alcove. If raiders broke in through once, they may try again. As you look around the room at the worn, stressed faces of the survivors, you realize they need food and rest. However, an even larger concern is basic security, especially having people keep watch on incoming danger. Kobe sits at your feet. Oh yeah, we have the cute little doggy with us. Ah! And big black eyes staring up at you. Don't be staring at me with big black eyes. As you're fine, you're not possessed. As you stand in the center of the sanctuary, you consider the speech you should make to the group. Uh, nope, can't do that one. Can't do that one either. Right, hold on, let's, let me offer prayer to aid the survivors. No. I know, okay, yeah, I know, I'm, I keep, I forgot that I was a minister, but I really don't think prayer would work at this kind of time. Raise the group's spirits with encouraging words. Focus on facts, we need to rebuild quickly and all band together with 100% effort. Just don't sugarcoat anything, we're at greater risk than ever before, and unless everyone listens to you, no one will survive. Uh, well, I don't know about that. Uh, okay, well, I gotta be upfront about the truth. You take one final look around the room at the tired and worn faces, the dirt and debris, the corpses lying among you, and the severe damage to the cathedral. Everyone listen up, you say, and the survivors form a semicircle around you. Taking a final deep breath, you wait for all to quiet down. We got our asses handed us today, but we fought hard and won. We suffered losses and are tired and hungry, but now is not the time to cry about it or anything. Wonder why this is happening. Fighting every day for our survival sucks, but I, for one, am going to keep fighting. We can't sit back now and rest. There's things to be done to restore the protection that the Cape to bleh, once gave us. <laughs> we have to fix the doors, clear out the dead, and secure our perimeter. And while we do all that, we need to set up guards to keep watch for new attacks, and still need to hunt and gather food. I wish there was an easier way, but there isn't. So if I ask you to do something, do it and don't delay. Another attack can happen at any time, and we need to be ready. There is a collective sigh around the room, looking at the expression of each survivor. You feel they are ready to take action, but were shaken by your words. Hey, even I was kind of shaken by my words. That was... That was quite inspirational, though. After the speech, you walk the group of survivors to the front of the cathedral to survey the damage. The inner sanctuary doors are broken and ripped from the hinges in most places, though they may be restored for use again. Between the inner and outer doors, a pile of dead bodies lie in varying states of decay. Those are the zombies much further along. The outer doors are shattered and their only use is to supply lumber for new doors that need to be built. Hey, we're making doors and doors. Fantastic. Now let's get into the specifics, you say. Oh boy. Before we get into anything else, Chloe, we need to figure out what to do about him, Mindy says, pointing to Badger, the only raider who survived the battle. Oh, okay, Badger. God damn you, Badger! Just kidding. Badger. A raider named Badger. I mean, who would be cool if her name was Bandit? Were you a raccoon as well? <laughs> the name is Badger. Oh, the name's Badger. He asks through a gruff voice. <clears throat> Gotta think of a voice. He has a gruff voice. I owe my life to your leader. And my name is Chloe. When the zombies attack, I make a quick decision to let you in. I am sorry the rest of your group died. But the truth is that you came to assault our home and kill us. That's true enough, but I have nothing to go back to. And you saved my life, so I'm here with you now. I should put a bullet through your head, Mindy. Mindy, come on now. 
You can try, girl, Badger says through a snarl. Enough, you yell. Badger is part of our group now. There is, oh my god. Okay. Oh, why do I, why do you gotta put me through this again, everybody? Why? I don't know what to do. No. Uh, Badger, you have to go. No, I'm not gonna. I've let everyone go. But the first time, that was a mistake. The second time, that was, that was really stupid of me. But I'm not gonna let any more people go. We can help each other. So, a badger is part of our group now, whether you like it or not. Your voice rings out through the stone walls of the cathedral. Though the faces of the survivors tell you they are not happy with your decision, no one speaks up to challenge it. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you, you, you listen. Everyone, there is a ton of work to get the, the cathedral back to a somewhat li livable condition, you say. I'm going to hand you a clipboard and pen. This may help. Thanks, Emma. First, I want to assign people to... Eh? I guess we'll put some people on watch for outside dangers? While the survivors perform the task you assign, someone must keep watch for any new threats. The cathedral is not currently defensible. An adequate warning must be given to all inside should bandits or zombies appear outside. Or unless raccoons with the name bandit felt. Ignore me, it's so dumb. Um, ooh, Heather, Tom, is Badger. I kind of don't fully trust him at the moment. Uh, I guess I'll send Mindy out then. Mindy nods in agreement. I'll get to it right away, she says. You check your clipboard for a tally of the assigned work. Total survivors. We have six. Current number assigned, five. Oh boy. Oh boy. Removing the dead, zero. Boarding entrance, zero. Securing alcove, resting, zero. Assign another person to the task. Watch duty. No, it's okay. Assign other task. My next priority is to stop assignments, check assignments, unassigned survivors, keep watch for outside dangers, board up the entrance of the cathedral, secure the entrance to the alcove, remove the bodies of the dead. Why? But I want to make some people rest. You know what I mean? The bodies of slain are rank with odor and lie about the sanctuary in random hideous displays of death. Severed limbs, pools of blood, and the infected carcasses of many zombies litter the area. Remnants of the awful battle, infection from both zombie virus and other common pathogens is an undeniable risk that increases the longer the dead rot about the cathedral. It will take several strong bodies to remove the dead. Okay. Tom? 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 No, not Tom. Maybe I'll choose Heather? Yeah. Heather sighs in an all too loud manner. Of all the things you ask me to do, why must you ask me to join corpse part, corpse duty? If you would rather do something else, I'll sign to another task. Give it the option? Yeah, that would be best. Okay then, go board up the entrance to the cathedral then. Having sustained a considerable amount of damage, the cathedral entrance provides little protection from bandits or zombies who wish to enter. Loose stones and flimsy plywood boards are all that keeps intruders from entry. Immediate attention must be given to a short-term repair job, providing enough of a barricade to limit the chances of someone or something breaking in. Of course, those survivors with construction experience should be highly considered. Who? I don't know. Emma? You good? Sure, no problem, Emma says. Unassigned. Okay, then. Securing alcove. Uh, assign some other tasks. Um, I need someone to help remove the dead. Hey, Badger, why don't you go? Ah, uh, what the fuck? Okay, that was weird. Oh, that was weird. Okay, then. You consider your options. No, uh, I'll go back. Now what? 
We don't have anyone securing the entrance to the alcove yet. Uh, Tom. Tom looks off to the side, staring past you. His face is blank and cold, with much of the color gone. Tom, you stayed again? His eyebrows raise and he turns to you. What the fuck? Excuse me, I am so sorry. Ignore that. A lot of weird hap things happening right now. At the moment. Kinda scared. I'll be right back. Oh shit. Okay, I'll be right back. Guys, please protect me from the storm. Cause I'm literally scared. Hey, Willow. Hey. Oh, crap. Again, bye. Have a great back. Tom is on board for fixing the alcove thingy. Uh, I'm gonna put someone on for a, a thing. Uh, Heather, you're gonna go and uh, watch duty. Uh, uh, board up entrance to the cathedral. Uncle Lou, you're gonna do that. I don't, I don't know. I don't think I can help. I need rest. No problem. Get some rest, Uncle Lou. You can go ahead. Thanks, Chloe. Uncle Lou says he, as he heads out of the sanctuary, walking with difficulty. You go rest up your poor little body, Uncle Lou. You did great. Uh, current number assigned. Good. We're all good. What? In your new role as leader, the best use of your time was to supervise each task in this turn. You first check on the group removing corpses. In the sanctuary, the survivors clear the dead by lining them closest to the front doors and covering them in large sheets of clear plastic to keep flies out and the odor in. Over 30 bodies in varying stages of decay lie about zombies and raiders alike. Based on your observation of the work being done to clear the bodies, not enough people have assigned to this task. It will take at least a few days at this rate to clear the area. While the corpses remain, all are, all are at risk of infection. Next. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, why don't I just go in order here? As you head into the vestibule between the inner and outer doors, you cover your mo nose and mouth when the rank odor wells up. The last of the bodies who died in the attack rests of the threshold to the outside. With the outer doors shattered and the inner doors barely on their hinges, it will take significant work to restore the area. With the amount of work involved, you did not assign enough people to the task. You will have to reassign people to this task later or risk of the cathedral being easily entered by anyone. I can never make the right choices, can I? Okay, blocking the tunnel? In the alcove, a cool breeze drifts through the hallway, with only Tom assigned to this task. It may seem too large a job for one individual, but he moves with purpose, packing dirt and debris to fill the hole in the alcove wall. Watching him for a few minutes, you are assured that this area will be secured soon. Next, who's on watch duty? Having survived a major attack from both raiders and zombies, you consider watch duty and moving forward a consistent, high-priority task. With only two people keeping watch on the road leading to the cathedral, the other grounds and various points on easy access, you wonder if that's enough of a system of early warning while the rest of the group works. But with Mindy as part of that team, you feel more confident that the duo can protect their survivors. That's why I went ahead and assigned Mindy, because I trust her and she is great. Having reviewed all of the work assignments, you think of moving into an office from which you can lead the survivors. Behind the cathedral's main stairwell exists a row of offices, one of which is occupied by Tom, another by Mindy, though having an office is not necessity. a necessity. Tom and Mindy have used theirs for strategic planning, meeting with survivors and someone as a status symbol of their position. Tom's office resides on the corner of the row with Mindy's next to it. Considering your own use of an office, you... Uh, well then... I'm not moving anyone out of their offices. What the hell? I'm not that kind of person. I'll move into an empty one. Past Mindy's office, the only remaining room is a cluttered, musty storage space with piles of boxes stacked like a hoarder's dream. Old newspapers form paper pillars by the door. Cardboard containers sit on flimsy shelves darkly stained as if rescued from water and dried over time. As you enter, you breathe in dust and cough it out in a puff of heavy air. 
The only redeeming quality of the room is an oak desk with a rolling chair in the center, which appears in great shape considering the length of its disuse. You sit on the chair and clear away clutter from the desk, mass schedules from over a year ago, and lay your shotgun across it. As you turn to face the paperwork, the chair squeaks, startling you. Your head is still foggy from lack of sleep, if anything to eat yet today. And anything... Chloe, why haven't you eaten anything? But you chuckle over being so jumpy. A noise from the hallway causes you to look up. Floorboards groan, a light scratching noise resonates through the hall like the sound of an animal scurrying. A heavy odor flows through the air. Death. Something is coming. What? Oh my god, no. As you stare at the hall through the doorway, a long blurry shadow passes. A tall figure casting a wavy image across the floor. A man steps into view, old and gray, with thin strands of coarse white hair sticking out of his scalp. He stares further down the hall. A long white linen robe hangs from the bony frame, a golden cross embroidered on the sleeve. His head bobs back and forth with a red square-shaped ridge to his hat adorning the top and a golden tassel hanging behind. His skin is prunish with long stretches of sagging skin and dark yellow lesions cresting out. Slender figures hang like tree twigs waving in the wind. Air whistles from his throat in sickening streaks. Though he stands at the door unmoving, he makes no indication of noticing you. We still hear the drawn-out scratching and shuffling noise from the hall now, multiplied. Could there be more of them? Slender man? Is that you? Uh, I'm going to move over silently and direct line of sight so I don't get seen. You stand and quickly move across the room. From the edge of a column of boxes, you watch the doorway. The zombie staggers past the doorway and out of sight. Another figure comes into view, a short round monk in dark robe and black cape, long strands of milky saliva slink from his wide, gibbering mouth. He follows the cardinal past the door behind him, follow two infected women in black and white nun's robes and tall, pointed hats. Their feet shuffle across the marble floor, and one's dress lifts to reveal her barefooted and the source of the heavy scratching noise, long toenails have hardened out the shape of horns. Next passes a smaller figure, a young acolyte in a thick cream-colored vestment stained with dirt and spotted with blood. He leans backward and a th three-foot-tall crucifix juts out of his stomach. Ah. Blackened blood dries at the bottom of the post and you can clearly see it has impaled his midsection. Even in undeath, he fails to let the crucifix fall. As the procession of living dead clergy passes the door, you stand and, yeah, head down the hallway where they came to learn more about how they got inside the cathedral. You cut toward the western hall. Solid figures, solid darkness hangs in the area, but enough ambient light flows to the old cathedral to guide your path. At the end of the corridor, the way turns south, and you walk to a storage room. You try the door. Locked. Next, you pass the alcove and hear work noise trickling through the corridor. There is little chance zombies could have passed through the hole made in the raider attack. That was lightning. Now wait for the thunder. Since the, the survivors assigned to fixing the alcove would have seen them enter and alerted the rest of the cathedral. In the distance, sounds of light growing make their way back to you, growling make their way back to you. Oh. Light growling sounds in the dist distance uh, making their way back to you. Then you hear scratching, brief bursts of nails against stone. The sounds grow louder and you turn back toward the other hallway. From the end of the corridor, a clawed hand reaches around the corner. The cardinal pulls himself into the hall, his red eyes glistening white and his mouth gaping with a long tongue unfolding and licking his bottom lip. You step backward and bump against the stone wall, bumping your head against the loose stone jutting out. The cardinal shrieks and sprints towards you, and the other undead clergy join behind him. Oh, well, shit, am I gonna die? As you burst through the cathedral, you call out for any who hear. Zombies inside! Help! You burst into the gathering and glance back to see the zombies in tow, the four of them flying down the hallway, pushing each other aside to be the first in line for a taste of living flesh. You race around the dining table, your hip cutting in the corner with a sharp twinge to the joint. 
the undead procession squeals as they scuttle across the tiled floor, knocking to the appliances, rattling pots and utensils to the floor. Through the archway, you speed into the sanctuary, almost knocking into Mindy. Holy crap, Mindy yells. Her eyes widen and mouth trembles as she takes shaky steps back to the altar. Without hesitation, she pulls around her sidekick submachine, submachine gun and lets loose a flurry of bullets. Repeated puffs of sound split the air. The cardinal topples over as her shots riddled her legs, which fooled under him. The monk collides with a senior zombie and tumbles over. Mindy butt slides over to the altar. No, Mindy butt slides over the altar as the remaining three zombies chase you through the sanctuary. Along the wall, a flash of fur races and you spot Toby launch his body at the altar boy. Toby reels like a black bear and his front paws knocking into the zombie, sending him back over the short stone steps leading to the altar. The altar boy stumbles and lands on his back with his head pinned where the altar meets the floor. Oh, oh, Toby, Toby, Toby. Toby jumps onto the prone zombified acolyte, which cracks its neck from the weight of the dog's body. Toby barks a few times, but the boy does not move. The two nuns continue to chase you through the sanctuary. Near the front doors of the sanctuary stands Heather, scoped rifle in hand, her body slowly rotating as she aims. She fires and you leap to one side, feeling the hot air blow right past your face. Looking back, you see the head of the first nun decimated with half of her brain exposed and still pulsating in short, quick motions. Heather fires again and hits the second zombie nun. Blowing her left arm off below the shoulder, her frail body spins in a circle, spraying blood in a wide arc. She falls and slides, smearing a thick, dark pattern below her. Heather rushes by her side. This place is filled with zombies, and you bring more, she says in a sarcastic, scoffing tone. As the one-armed nun sits up, Heather's rifle rings out another shot, completely scalping the undead woman and sending her to final rest. In the back of the sanctuary, Mindy leans over the cardinal and altar boy, firing rounds into the now dead, reanimated corpses giving them eternal rest, their bodies twitching flail, hopping, flopping limbs against the stone tiles, splashing dark brown blood pools. Mindy backpedals against the altar and discharges the clip from the submachine gun, facing it with a fresh one while eyeing the pair of living dead corpses. You plop into a folding chair and lean on your arms to rest. How the hell did they get inside, Mindy asks, swinging the MP5 back over her shoulder. She steps over to you, arms folded, a nervous bounce to her stance. No idea, you say through your short breaths. Still recovering from the action, by now all the survivors have made it to the sanctuary and stare at the dead, robbed, robbed zombies. You recount for the group the events leading to this moment and describe the path the undead group walked through the cathedral. Even though the alcove is not prepared, I doubt five zombies crawled in through such a narrow space, says Mindy, and I doubt they came in near the small church of the southern courtyard and the states. There is an area deeper south we haven't explored much since we got here. I've always wondered what exists there, you say. I'll investigate the halls near the gathering. Everyone else get back to work, you say. With all due respect, it could be dangerous if more zombies are lurking about, Tom says. Yes. Well, not going to do that alone. Uh, I can take a few people with me. I'd like to go too, Chloe, Mindy says and grabs her MP5 off her shoulder. Tom lifts his double barrel shotgun and checks each chamber. Soon the circle of survivors separates and heads off into multiple directions. You lead Mindy and Tom through the gathering and head into the southern end of the cathedral. The hallway near narrows the further you walk and warmer air circulates the deeper you travel. Though you have only walked one half length of the cathedral, this area feels foreign. Mold and mildew crust the ceiling in hues of green and yellow, crisscross in some areas like, in com like an complex lattice forged by architects of this section. I, th I, think, I think there's a, a typo here in this story. While you examine the surface, a whistling reaches your ears high-pitched and escalating in short bursts as if a train is barreling closer. You nearly trip on something and crouch down to identify some type of shoe or slipper on the ground. Smudged and torn, a single slipper is purple satin with silk interior and bits of broken leather on the inside. Tom slides next to you and holds his hand out. You hand him the shoe, 
and he rotates it in his hands before lifting it to eye level. Looks like the cardinal lost his shoe. Further down, the whistling intensifies and the air grows even warmer, though damp. Your hands sweat over your shotgun. Light radiates from the end of the hallway through the ornate windows, now reinforced by wood and steel. As you walk down the hall, you spot a break in the wall, three feet high, starting from the floor. The stones seem once sunken, and only darkness escapes through the opening. Tom takes out a flashlight and shines it through the opening beyond revealing a shallow room. You scan the area and spot several beds, barren shelves, full trash bags, and shredded clothing. You climb down into the room and drop a short distance. Dust plumes around your ankles. Spider webs cling to the low ceiling and the air is stale with the scent of earth. The room is much wider than long and now viewing it from the inside, you see only, only a single door leaving the room, a heavy metal sheet with a single latch and a thick wooden beam kept bearing it. In the corner of the room, several bodies lie still, blackened and decayed. Death must have come a long ago. By the looks of this hole, the foundation was rocked and shifted to stones. It must have been from the blast, Tom says, crouched next to the edge of the room. I also see the faint outline of dusty footprints leading from the sunken room to this hallway. So the blast somehow shook the cathedral enough that back here the wall broke and let the zombies out who were trapped inside? Jesus, I didn't know what's that. I don't know what's worse. The thought of those things being up there all along with us or that there may be more somewhere walled up. Ew, that's, I don't want to think of that. That's, no, oh, that's disturbing. That means that where, that means they were here before the outbreak. After I brought, bought the cathedral, Tom says, they must have come back to this secret area to escape the undead. Oh, shit. He searches through the room while Tom and Mindy has discussed the hole in the wall. The rest of the room contains beds, a great open chest with religious clothing for both men and women, several Bibles, a copper chalice, and strands of prayer beads. Many of the items may be used for religious observance and seem heavily used. Claw marks scar the room in numerous spots, especially near the hole leading out of the room. The items in the room and setup of beds suggest people use this as a personal dorm or safe haven during the outbreak. He stepped near the bodies in the far corner, both ragged and long dead, with shreds, with shredded clothing hanging over their decomposed corpses. Dried blood paints the ground beneath them. Gauge marks decorated their arms and legs, some areas bitten down to the bone. With a little more to search in the room, you head back into the hallway. Along with Tom and Mindy, you deduce that the explosions from the raider attacks must have rocked the cathedral foundation and a hole opened large enough for the five trapped zombies to escape, the cardinal, nuns, monk, and altar boy, along with two others, must have barred themselves inside at the start of the outbreak, but someone became infected and spread the disease. The story spreads among the survivors, and while many are chilled by the thought of these zombies living among you for so long, they are relieved that no lasting danger exists from the inside of the hey, cathedral. Many express their appreciation at your deductive reasoning. Uh, thank you. Great. Wonderful. Your first day as leader of the cathedral ends quickly faster than you imagined. Time flies as your strategic planning, work, delegation, office setup, and finally dealing with the zombie group all kept you well occupied and wondering if you have succeeded in your new role. Tomorrow, you hope to meet with each survivor and gather feedback on your effectiveness as leader and gain opinions on how work should be prioritized for the future. With the influx of zombies into the area, you must decide whether fixing the cathedral is worth the effort, or if it is time to move on to find a new safe haven. Wow, that's amazing. Great. I don't think we're going to continue. I don't know if I should continue or just leave it here. Um, Give me a second, I will be right back. I'm just gonna go ahead and do one more chapter. Also, sorry, a bit of an absence. I went outside to take a look at the storm. The sky was pretty interesting to look at. I don't know how to explain it, but it was kind of freaky, yet it was cool at the same time. 
uh, took a little bit of a video of lightning, and a pretty interesting thing happened right towards the end of the video. Now, I will be uploading it to show you guys. That video is going to be uploaded before this one, probably earlier in the morning, or like really early in the morning. So, uh, yeah, it, it was cool. Sky was pretty cool looking. Anyway, August 14th, 2012. A hard rain pounds outside your dorm room window and wakes you with the early light of the morning. Hey, same here, except it was nighttime and it wasn't rain. <laughs> a few days have passed since the raid on the cathedral and the cleanup and repair work have been non-stop. As the new leader of the cathedral, you plan to rise early and get a distant breakfast and make plans for keeping this place going. At least until you decide if you are staying here or leaving forever. Zombie Exodus is coming, and you received just a taste of, of it a few nights ago. There is no denying a decision needs to be made. Fortify and defend against the coming zombie masses, or pack up and leave for another place. A safer place. You climb out of bed, slip on the cleanest robes of your own, and head down to the gathering. With the recent attacks on the cathedral in mind, and the thoughts of running into another pack of religiously dressed zombies, you would stop off at the supply room and grab some weapons. Okay, I'll get the uh, machine gun. Okay, secondary weapon. Do I need to be smart about this? Uh, hmm. I don't know, I guess I'll get- I'll take the, uh, AK-47. Having selected a few weapons, your grumbling stomach compels you toward the gathering for breakfast. Candles flicker in the gathering and a faint smell of coffee seeps through the air. Cold radiates off the stone walls, and a stiff draft churns through the floors of the cathedral, strengthened by the coming autumn winds. Uncle Lou stands at the grill, chopping sizzling potatoes with the edge of his spatula. He wheezes with each slow, labored breath, and at one point he lays the spatula on the side of the sink and clutches his ribs, leaning over with a grimace, but only a few seconds later, his face calms and he stands, and a wide smile spreads across his red face. Oh, that... What's happening to Uncle Lou? Oh, I don't... Ah. He swipes his forehead with a stained tan towel, spooning out a, a generous portion of hash browns. He slaps it on a plate and slides it across the table to you. Oh, thanks, Uncle Lou. He turns the grill to low and pours a cup of thin black liquid into a Yogi Bear mug. Nice. As you sit at the long central table, Toby stands from his resting place on a mat in the corner and trots over. He hops up with you, front paws on your legs, sniffing and licking your hand. Lou sits at the table and wipes a spot in front of him, then lays the cup down. Not the best coffee, but it'll do. Oh, hey, let's talk to Uncle Lou, because... Yeah. You eat your breakfast of potatoes, onions, and spices while talking to Lou. Toby lies on the floor next to you, head covering his paws. Aw, ears flat. Aw, Toby. <laughs> How are you feeling? Better today, thanks for asking. My ribs don't throb so much. But over the past few days, I've been treating myself with a bit of special medicine. Uncle Lou holds up his coffee mug and tilts it side to side with a smile. It's just coffee now. Oh. Okay. I, I don't know. Were you putting something in your coffee? Uncle Lou leans forward and props himself on a hairy forearm. He tosses a scrap of meat to the floor and Toby greedily gobbles it up. He looks your ways, as if wondering if you have anything to give him. But, aww, <laughs> sorry but then drops his head back to the cold stone floor. When you continue your meal, you move on to another topic. Hmm. Yeah, cathedral's leadership, let's ask about that. Sure, what's on your mind? Eh. My priority, how do you think I'm doing so far as a leader? What do you think should be my priority? Uh, being the new leader of the survivors. 
Oh crap, uh, I don't know. Um, guess I should ask for my priority. Uncle Lou's eyes go wide. Getting out of here like I have been saying. We need to get a truck, pack it up, and move out. Time is wasting with the zombies and bandits. We need to get out of here and find a better place to live. Okay. No problem. What else do you want to talk about? Uh, what did you think about the attack of the zombies during the raid? It's just more reason for us to get out of here. The zombie nexus, or whatever you call it, is happening. My plan is to get a truck, build it like, out like a tank, pack it up with all we can fit, and hit the road. Staying here makes no sense. As soon as I feel up to it, maybe in a few days. I'm heading to that truck depot to get a big rig and start a new Uncle Lou's big truck. But this isn't serving food, but zombie death. Uncle Lou's belly hits the table and shakes it, causing some of your food to flip off the plate. You clean it up and think of a new topic to discuss. Hold on. Is this going to be one of those moments where Uncle Lou doesn't get the truck and everything ready because he dies or something? I don't want to think of that, but it just came up in my mind. Sorry. Um... Uh, uh, talk about your work assignment for the day. Yeah, gotta talk to him about that. To be honest, cooking and cleaning the kitchen is all I got in me today. Uncle Lou says, holding his ribs, a pain look on his face. Of course. I don't want to push him. Okay, yeah, no, no. I think, yeah, you should go, just, just go and rest. That probably is a good idea. If I rest up, I'll be faster and get it to the finding that truck to leave the cathedral. Good call, Chloe. Thanks. I'll leave you now. You clean your plate in a sink full of moderately clean water and stack it on a shelf. Toby rises and walks beside you. As you move to the hall, Uncle Lou calls your name. Hold on one sec. Uncle Lou walks to the stove and scrapes away a layer of cooking food from a heavy plan. Cooking food from a heavy pan. So let me ask you, are you ready to take a trip to me? Are you ready to take a trip with me to get the trucks for when we leave? I'd like to go soon and can use your help. Yeah, of course. I'll go with you. Great. I'll let you know when I'm ready. Probably in the next day or so. Uncle Lou brings the pan to the sink, his heavy hand scraping at the metal surface with a rough sponge. Stepping into your new office, you sit at the desk and review inventory and resource information. Toby takes a spot by your feet and stretches out his body. Oh my god, I love Toby so much. Pinned to your whiteboard is a simple note from Tom saying that the cathedral's entrance is still not fixed and more people are needed to repair it. Taped to your desk is a note from Emma stating that several survivors have had stomach pains and diarrhea. Oh, gross. When she attends the diseased and rotten corpse is still lying in the sanctuary with barely any medicine left. She has had little luck in treating the illness. The resource list reads as follows. Water two days, food three, energy nine days, medicine low. Of course it is. With a better understanding of the cathedral's needs, you look to your list of survivors to meet with them and discuss the plans for today and the future. Now I'll just talk with Tom. Tom is in his office, crouched near a row of boxes. As you enter, you spot him folding a cardboard flap over a row of bottles. He glances in your direction, but keeps loading up boxes with liquor from his cabinet. An odd glow crosses his face from the oil lantern hanging near the doorway. The room is cold and damp, but the Tom is wearing a thick brown sweater, and with his dark beard and hair combed to the side, he appears as a college professor. Dude. Well, I'm actually envisioning that in my mind right now. Hey, Tom, I came to talk. You have a minute? With a nod, he says, yes, we should talk. He sits on the old couch and crosses an ankle over his knee, arms stretched across the back. Toby scampers up to a side shelf where a jar of spiced jerky sits and begins to sniffing at it. Toby, over here, you yell and slap your leg. The dog marches, the dog marches to your side, head hung low. So, what's on your mind? Hmm. I'm hearing really weird noises outside, and it's kind of creeping me out. Uh, yeah, I'm going to discuss his assignment. Tom nods and grabs a notebook from the side table. 
I have made some notes on who I would assign to each task if you are interested in seeing it. Not sure. Let, let him talk. Tom. Sixth Cathedral Entrance. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Emma. Daily Chores. Medical Duty. Mindy. Watch Duty. Uncle Lou. Daily Chores. Kitchen Duty. No. We're getting Uncle Lou to rest. Badger. Figure your corpses from Sanctuary. I agree with everything except for Uncle Lou because he's supposed to be resting because his hips are kind of not in the best shape right now. Uh -oh. You've seen my list. What would you like me to work on today? Tom asks. First, you review the list of survivors currently assigned. Okay, no one ever assigned to anything. Tom, you're assigned to repairing the cathedral's entrance. Oh, God. Ah. Uh oh. Sounds great. I'll get right to it. You mark Tom's assignment down in your notes and turn back to him and say, No, we're just, I'm gonna, yeah, let's go. Let's go in. Tom nods and rises. Toby hops up next to you as you stand. You head out of the office and walk back to your office. After resting for a short while, next you head to Mindy. You find Mindy sitting on a bed in her dorm room, meticulously cleaning her SMG. Her hair hangs around her face, and she wears dark skin tight clothes, battle ready. A faint light glows outside the single window in the room, which is cluttered with clothing, old newspapers and magazines, maps and other random items. As you step into the room, she places the SMG to the side. Hey, Miller, come on in. There's a chair somewhere over there if you want to sit. She waves her foot in the direction of a pile of junk. Oh my god, that's me. <laughs> She waves her foot, no. Toby follows you in, rushes to Mindy, and jumps on the bed. Get down! Toby hops down and drops his head down low with his back arched, looking at her with the top of his eyes. Oh, don't be so mean to the dog. You find a wooden chair and clear it of a pair of tennis shoes and a book on gun repair. So, what's up? I just want to talk to you about your assignment. I really don't feel like talking about anything else. Mindy. Okay, I'm ready to get to work. Watch duty would make sense or sending me out to research for resources. What did you have in mind for me? Oh, I think it was watch duty. She can handle that. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. Gotta ask her what her plans are for zombie exodus. I'm doing whatever you are. My preference has always been to leave here, but I haven't given much thought to it lately. What do you think we should do? We're leaving. I'm leaving with Uncle Lou. Come with us. Please. Sounds good to me. Whatever you choose, Miller. And that's why I'm going with. Mindy's smile has an almost cult-like quality to it, but it soon drops for a look of worry. You do want me to stay with you, right? I mean, if you remain at the cathedral or go, I'm with you, right? Hell yeah. Oh, Emma. I forgot about Emma. We're all on our own, and no, we'll see what happens, because I can't make any promises. We'll see what happens. I'm basically saying I'll do whatever you want. I can be a real asset to you. Trust me. I can. Just think about it. We can talk again, so you can let me know your ultimate decision. Mindy seems desperate, a side of her you are not used to seeing. For now, you decide to change the subject. No, I'm just, just going to go. I'm going to talk to Emma, Emma now? After searching the interior of the cathedral for half an hour, you find Heather sitting on the lawn halfway down the hill leading to the old pine woods. She's dressed in blue overalls with a black and gray Ramon t-shirt underneath. Her sandy hair blows to the side, lifted off her shoulders. Bare feet dig loose dirt and sighs from the rustling grass, distant calls of unseen birds. A quiet looms from the river to forest. Empty roads stretch between the cathedral lawn and the start of the thick woods. Once Toby spots Heather, he rushes down the hill and hops over her. He has been trained not to bark outside, no, so zombies are not attracted to the noise. Oh, great. Hey, Heather says as you sit on the cool ground. She pulls out a blade of grass and flicks it a few feet. The wind catches it and carries away. Everything okay? I don't know, Heather says. I don't feel myself lately. My mind is just racing all the time. I'm too stressed out. Heather runs a hand through her hair. She lights up a cigarette and takes a long draw. Rain clouds form overhead, though the air is dry and sun beats down. After a few minutes of silence, she smiles at you and offers her a cigarette. 
Oh, gross. No, absolutely not. Heather reaches back for the cigarette and takes a puff. So what brought you down here anyway? About your assignment. Work is the four-wet allergic word, you know, Heather states. You review the work assignments so far. Uncle Lou is resting. Mindy's on watch duty. Tom board cathedral entrance. Well, I don't know. I forget what Heather was supposed to be on. Okay, go find a oh, food. Yeah, go find food. Sure, I'll go down to that restaurant you like in Temperance and grab us some takeout. You want the steak or lobster? Maybe both? That little surf and turf sounds good. Heather, we need to keep searching for food no matter how hard it becomes. I know, I know. I'm just teasing. With Heather Wurr's work assignment discussed, I need to go. I missed that, I'm sorry. Back at the cathedral, you grab a quick drink of lukewarm water in the kitchen and cool off after being in the heat outside. You fill a small bowl for Toby, who slurps it up loudly, spilling most of it on the floor. Oh my god, it sounds like my dog, Willow. <sighs> ah, good old day. Even though my face is cringing. You gotta visit Badger. As you walk to Badger's dorm room, you pass by the supply room and spot him inside. His back is sealed by his gray ponytail swings as you look over the shelves of items. His dark trousers are frayed at the end and have plaster dust on the edges, and he wears a butterscotch plaid sweater, which is too small and hugs his body. Before he realizes you are behind him, you... I'm going to question him about his presence in there. Badger, you shout. Badger jumps in place and drops a medical clipboard. Oh, oh, God, okay then. Which rattles on the ground, he turns clockwise to face you and bends over for the clipboard. His ample belly protrudes and his pants slip down to show a bit too much of what lies beneath. Gross. Sorry I didn't see you there, he says and stands. What are you doing here? Checking inventory. I figured after the fight the other day we need a good accounting of everything we have. Uh, Mindy handles their inventory. There's no need to spend time on it. No, no, gotta get into my office. All right, Badger says and follows you outside of the supply room down the hall. You shouldn't be in there. Mindy handles in for inventory, and we only allow people in the supply room gearing up for a mission. All right, I'll keep that in mind, he says with a gruff tone. Inside your office, you take the seat behind your desk and point him to the couch nearby. Badger, I just have a few questions for you. Sure, no problem, he says and lays on one, one leg up on the couch. Toby steps in the room, eyes fixed on Badger, nose down near the floor, and creeping along. He circles around the man and sits attentively at her feet. Ah, the dog doesn't seem very trustworthy towards him. Um, uh, uh, ask him about his life before the outbreak. Getting personal, huh? Badger asks with a nod smile. My life wasn't too far off from what it is now. Moved around a lot, did what I had to do. Found ways to make money, some legal, which wasn't much of a leader. But I had my share of running small crews and such. Badger raises his hands behind his head and leans back. He jets his chin out and tightens his lips before speaking again. I know what you're thinking, and yes, I did my share of hard time. Did a stretch in Albuquerque and another, longer one in Dallas. Armed robbery bank job. The thing I was terrible. The thing is, I was terrible at it. On my last attempt, I hooked up with these Mexican guys out of Austin, the DeGaldo brothers, Marco and David. Ended bad, so I moved out of the area and made it all the way to Temperance as the outbreak started. If you have time, I can tell you about the DeGaldos. It's an interesting story. Cool, but I really don't have the time right now. Uh, what's your work? Right, let's have it, Badger says. We review the work assignments so far. Great. We are putting him on clearing up the sanctuary of corpses. Corpses. You know, I used to run a raiding party. You can use me in better ways than scraping dead off the floor, but I'll do it. Badger takes a pen out of his pocket and drops a note on the palm of his hand. I'll get started as soon as we're done talking, he says. Next. No, it's okay. We're, at, uh, we're done talking anyway. I don't really need to talk to Emma. 
After speaking with the other survivors, you finalize your duty list and post it in the kitchen for all to read. Any assi unassigned survivors are assigned to daily chores. Duty list. Badger is unrooving dead. Heather finding food. Mindy watch duty. Uncle Lou is resting. Emma is working on daily chores. And Tom is working on boarding cathedral entrance. Great, that's excellent. That's what we wanted. Toby wanders off after following you around all day so far. You head, oh, I love that dog so much. You head back to your office in the mid-afternoon, hungry and already tired from the mental efforts exerted today. Back in your office, you review a copy of the duty list and decide to... What? Yeah, I'll, I'll go find some... No, hang on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help fix the cathedral entrance. At the front of the cathedral, you survey, survey the damage to, to the doors, exterior, and vestibule, and assess the work needed for repairs. All are broken and in terrible shape, so you consider repairs are needed to restore the defenses. With your technical skills and construction, you quickly surmise the best approach to finding the, fixing the damage. Having one other person helping is not usually enough, but having Tom at your disposal is a strong asset due to his construction knowledge. You spend two and a half hours lifting large beams and other, no, large beam of wood, nailing them against the existing structure, sawing, sanding, and scraping, and other back-breaking tasks to improve the entrance to the cathedral. Somehow you are able to repair the damage enough to feel confident in the front door's defenses. You are sure your fellow survivors will be pleased with the results. Later in the day after work is done, the survivors prepare for a family-style dinner. Uncle Lou prepares a bean chili with brown rice and corn cakes. Oh my god, that actually sounds so good. It is a meager meal, but no one is seen smiling at the quality of portion size. But it provides nourishment. During the meal, you ask about the events of the day to garner a sense of how much work is accomplished. First, Mindy states that watch duty proved uneventful, but also voices concern that more people are needed to keep watch over the large cathedral grounds. Next, Badger mentions that he spent all day removing bodies from the sanctuary, but the task is too much work for any one person. The smell is unbearable. Flies are everywhere, and everyone is afraid of contracting disease from the piles of dead and undead corpses. He recommends that more people need to be assigned to this task. Let's discuss the mission to find food, you say. Heather, how'd it go? Heather leans forward and addresses the group. I went around the old pine woods, heading west, searching the countryside for any hidden paths or homes. Basically, anything I could find that may have food, the zombies' presence has definitely increased. I spent more time avoiding the undead than finding food. After a few hours of searching the western area, I spotted tracks of a deer and followed it through the woods. I found it dead a mile or so deep in the forest with a wolf on it, which I chased away. The deer was killed only a short time before, and I was able to cut away a good portion of meat, maybe ten pounds. Unfortunately, since I was alone out there, I constantly had to keep watch for the dead and couldn't find much more than the deer. While the survivors are excited by the food Heather finds, there are rumblings of discontent at the decision not to assign more people to the task. Who else am I supposed to assign? There's not very many people. The last topic is fuel. I didn't ask anyone to go out and find fuel because other tasks took precedence. I will assign people to search for fuel in the near future. As the recap of today's tasks and chores ends, so does dinner. And Uncle Lou and Emma take charge of cleanup duty as the rest of the survivors relax and chat over tea. I'm going to do that too. So the food and caffeine help stave off a nagging headache from today. You are exhausted and a bit every and a bit and bit everyone a good evening before setting out to your dorm room. All intentions all intentions are to relax at your desk and review the cathedral's inventory. But as you sit in your padded wooden chair, your eyelids become heavy and you feel yourself dozing. In your leadership role, you still have to work to do, and the responsibility of keeping everyone safe and alive motivates you to remain awake. That's great. That's amazing. Late in the night, after the sun has fallen and the moon is taking its place in the black sky, you change your clothes for sleep and collapse into bed. As your body relaxes, sleep washes over you like a warm wave. Continuing on. I think I'm going to leave it here for now. 
Um, hopefully I didn't end it too abruptly, but I'm gonna stop it here because my voice is starting to go and I have other things I need to attend to. But I hope you enjoyed this one, if you did. Thank you so much for watching. And if you liked it, hit that button down below. And uh, like always, I will catch you all in the next episode. Stay awesome. Bye.